Oh, Vic, look at that. Look at the main frame. Oh, whale tails, look at his fronts. <gasps> this is what we're looking for, but... We gotta be ready for it. Yeah. Okay, so listen, our spy point cameras, we've got them out, and we know that the elk are hard horn now. Yep, they're st We're all, getting almost ready. all the velvets off. They're starting to come to water more. I mean, things are yes. really looking up, and we just wanna go over some things that we've used for years and years and years chasing elk, just to maybe help you make you a little more successful this season. Clothing. Yeah. If you're like us, you stop at Bass Pro Cabela's, you probably buy more than we should. We definitely buy more than we but should. The basic necessities have always stayed the yes. same. Yes. I mean, year after year after year, you have your favorite clothing. Yep. And depending on how you're coming out west, you know, you could pack more if you needed to. I mean, look at my basic well, like you little said, bit if you're and driving, how much you have. Well, whatever. I'm just that, saying. Yeah, that's total <laughs> false information right now. I'm just brought a bunch of stuff to go over real quick, but she brought it to, so it looks like she's dainty and she's really organized. And it probably looks way more organized over there than here. <laughs> it does, but that's okay. Yeah. But seriously, we're just going to go over a couple quick seasons right. and what our favorites are. Bottom line, layers. Right. Layers, because it's not like you're always going to just be walking to a water hole. You're going to be, you know, up and about. You're going to be hiking. You're going to be climbing. You're going to be descending. Everything's going on. So having layers to turn around and start either putting them on or taking them off is definitely, definitely a major plus for you. Well, and most of the places that you're obviously out west hunting elk, the evenings are cooler than the yep. daytime highs. So that's why you're going to need to do layers. In the morning, we'll throw our base layers on, throw on something else, and maybe a jacket. One of my favorite midday hot days is the She Oasis outfit. Yep. Okay, yep, lightweight. it's super lightweight. They have both the top and the pants. Have pockets, everything you need for them, but they're lightweight. If it's cool in the morning, I'm going to put a pair of base layer underneath here. Yep. And if I have to in the middle of the day, take them off out in the bush and put them in my backpack. That's right. It's that simple. You know, and Vic, again, layers, layers, layers. A few things like, I always, I like vests. Hey, and I have one too. I know. And I'll tell you why. One, if you're wearing a regular t-shirt or a performance t-shirt that's lightweight, doesn't have pockets, a vest goes over that. It gives you your yes. pockets. Absolutely. Major plus, calls, yeah. range finders, everything you can imagine, releases. So that's one of the big things. Packable rain gear. No matter where you're going, what season Neat. you're hunting. This is a necessity. You never know what those storms are going to do in the middle of the day. And they weigh nothing. Yep, throw them in your pack, keep them there. I like two pair of gloves. One, depending, I try to, you know, we always check the weather in the mornings before we go out, but a little bit warmer pair and a very thin, lightweight pair. This way I have every aspect covered for that certain So day. I know you love your camo makeup, but yes. what I like to take the is face actually mask. just a face mask, just a gator, because I can quickly put it up, put it back down, yeah. and I just like that better. I'm, I know you love your well, makeup. It's, it's like putting war paint on, you know what I mean? True, and if it's super like hot out, I'm, I'm gonna do it anyway. It's psychological. Right. Uh, a couple things. I wasn't a big fan of these years ago, okay? And I'll show you, you know, because it was like, it doesn't cover the top, but they have all but kinds of really lightweight. shiny. Well, the other thing too, is as you're hiking, you're starting to sweat, you know, perspire way more, is you turn around and you're still able to escape heat with nothing. You know, so it's a big plus. One of my favorite, and you've seen me wear them for years, is a 3D hat, and why? Why do I like leafy wear? And I'll tell you, it's pretty simple. You put this stuff on and it, it totally, totally camouflages that human silhouette. Right. Big time. Just so I've got the leafy top, which is weighs nothing. Mm -hmm. And then I've had my hat because why? What are the two things that move the most in the woods? Your hands and your head. So you yes. need to keep them covered. I usually just wear my, my baseball yep. hat is what I usually go hunting in no matter what season it is. If it's colder outside, I will go ahead and throw me a little hat on top of it. I know you like wearing two or three hats at the yeah, same I do. time. I don't I do don't that. have as much hair. Is that why? Again, we go to layers. I do have a heavier fleece. I love it because when you, look it. No that's, noise. That's like the she Valkyrie. No the jacket noise. here, again, first thing in the morning, later in the afternoons, if you're out in the mountain all day, easy enough to go ahead and strap onto the back of your backpack, but it's quiet, it's warm, has lots of pockets, and if you are hunting on a tree stand, this one actually has the, yep. the hole for, for your them harness. Do. Yep. And, you know, on, even on the instinct line is we've got them all here, too, so tree stands, whatever it is, it's always prepared. 
I always bring a toque. Yeah, toque, Canadian sort of version, is it's just a warm hat. It's a stocking hat, gives me heat, holds in the heat. Turn around, you can always put your hat back on. So or now you could you, add another one on top of it. I could. I really that's could. That's what you like to do. Wow. Okay, again, performance wear material, lightweight, lightweight pants. Here's one you don't think about. Puffy jacket. Yeah, it's packable. This instinct puffy jacket, the thing is, is you could take this whole thing up and put it in a one gallon Ziploc bag, throw it in your pack, and it weighs nothing. Now no. you've prepared for every situation, even if you gotta sleep out at night. Well, you that's what I was gonna say. We started off talking about early season wearing lightweight yep. clothing, but you also have to remember, sometimes on the mountain, you don't know what can happen. We've had snow here in September in, oh, yeah. in Colorado. It can happen like that, and you need to be ready for it. That packable puffy jacket it really could priceless. save yeah priceless absolutely priceless you know and the other thing too is our merino wool wool right, our, as a base our, layer. our base layers yes. our bass broke bells ba base layers yes. and that's why wool wicks away moisture mm -hmm. huge and speaking of wicking away moisture that's leading into our socks socks so many people do not give enough credit to socks these are polys polypropylene so these are our base layer of socks right. and then we go to a good quality not a cheap brand sock but a good quality sock that goes on because this is not only going to protect your feet from blisters and everything else but comfort climbing hiking doing everything well, like that and keep warm and always throw an extra pair of clean wool socks in your backpack yep because after a long day you're hiking your feet are going to start getting sore you know what take your boots off Take your socks off, let them air out for a bit, take your siesta in the middle of the afternoon, That's right. put a clear like pair it. of socks on. It's gonna give you more cushion again and you'll be set to go. Now, footwear. Yeah. You know, it all depends where you're hunting and the style of hunting, but you can see these, these are Corbella's mountain hikers and I'm gonna tell you, we've put them through the test. Vicky's has the These are actually the, the she sheep. mountain hikers. Yep, love these. These are actually my second pair because I have worn the other pair out the whole way after a couple years, they are just destroyed. But these are actually, these are new, but they don't look new. <laughs> now here's the other thing, a lot of people don't pay attention to, and that's the insoles. If right. you have a favorite insole, go get yourself a set, pull out the ones that were in the original, whatever original right. boot, and put them in there. Your feet are so comfortable in what you, you're, you're always wearing, keep the same thing in these. And yep. a big, big advantage, plus bring an extra pair of insoles. It's so easy to do. They weigh you, nothing. They weigh nothing. And they're super easy to put in and out. You just saw me grab that out of this one. So, yeah. I mean, it's it's that simple. You can get a new pair, put them in there, and you're set to go. And you see these are leather. Treat your leather. Don't just turn around and think, oh, they're good. Every year we, we, we treat them, we take care of them, and then we put them up for the rest of the season. But the bottom line here is making sure that everything you do, everything you're bringing for your clothing has a purpose. Don't bring extra stuff that you don't even, you're never even gonna use because now you're just taking up space and maybe adding weight to your pack. All right, let's talk a little bit about scouting and optics. Very important, and I'll tell you why. It is so important not to contaminate the area, especially on mountains that you haven't been to. Right. You could bump them. If you're hunting public ground, you don't wanna keep moving those elk out of the area. The biggest thing to do is get to a high vantage point and where you can really cover your terrain. And I'm saying cover it. You will be more successful if you spend more time glassing and you know using that as a scouting technique than just walking and hiking. So I mean, basically, and we've done this, is if, if you have, say, a 10-day hunt, yep. take the first couple days and scout. That way you're not diving straight in and messing stuff up. Now, one of the ways we scout is like you said, we're gonna try to get a high vantage point yep. and look over the places. One of the things is obviously have the best optic optics that you can afford. Right. That's the key. Have good sticks. When I say sticks, either a little tripod or, you know, a lot of times you're gonna spend hours and hours just glassing. So what I like to do is just here, sit here and rest, rest my binos up here and I just pivot and I could glass like that. Or I put my spotting scope on my tripod and I put my binos up over. So this actually is like this. And the reason I do that, when this is on my tripod and I finally find something and I really wanna look, I turn around, these are right here, I'm glassing, I look at something, ooh, let me see that. I drop them right here, they're pointing the direction I need to look, I can acquire the target way quicker by running that dual purpose you know, situation. Now one of the things is you're gonna be sitting glassing for a long day. Oh. So, Elp just came out with this. Oh. 
This thing will save your butt day in and day out. One, yes. keeps you off the wet ground, pads your butt, and for hours it's just sitting there and trying to glass this thing, and it weighs nothing. It weighs nothing, nothing. the Summit, yeah. Well, now it really weighs nothing. Yes. Yes, nice. A couple other things, range finders. Big, big go-to on every type of hunt. Here was a cool thing we just found recently. And this thing clips on just like this, okay? Clips on like any of your bino harnesses, on your belt, anything, and then it's just magnetized. What's really cool, it's got a little safety clip. It holds it right here. Boom, you won't lose them. But more than anything, it's a quick boom, boom, and you're done. And, and if you're not wearing a bino harness, you can go ahead and just add it right yep. to your belt or your pocket and still always keep that safety on it. So if you are walking through some thick brush, you're not going to lose your range finder. That way it's always right there for you. This should be in your pack every day, all day long. What it is, just a little wind check. Got a little powder in there. You do this. It shows you which way the wind's going. Great tool to have because sometimes if it's still, you don't know what your thermal's doing. Remember, in the morning, warm air rises. In the evening, cold air settles down. Morning's up, evening's down. That'll help you. The other thing too, when there becomes a breeze, it will override your thermals. But always, always pay attention to the wind. Now let's talk about scentless and scent. Yep. First off, this is mandatory. You can't leave camp, leave your truck, leave your tracker or whatever it is without one, maybe even two. I carry two. Yeah, because you're going to use it you, constantly yep. checking to see the, which way the wind is going because if you do get into elk, you're going to be checking, checking, checking to make sure that you're always in front of that wind so that bull ain't going to smell you. Doing all your scent preparation, you know, trying to be as clean as possible. Remember, nothing is going to eliminate human odor completely. Nothing. We're wash being honest. Clothes with some scent away. Yep. Clothes wash. Make sure that you go ahead and you bathe with the shower right. wash and the shampoo. Spray down once you're dressed. This is some stuff that you absolutely love. Oh my gosh! Any time of the day, I could take a little sponge bath with it, and at least it's helping me one stay as clean. Out? Huh? Take a sponge with you? No, that's... You okay, know I was just about. checking. Yeah. Just making sure. But it's you, foaming. You know, yeah, <laughs> so, so it allows us to be as clean as possible, even during hiking situations where it right. maybe get warm and everything. Our sent away wipes, there's... We have them in every pack. We have them in every vehicle. We have them everywhere. Why? Because it's just another tool to help you. Here's one of the things is you hear a bull. You hear some cows. You go chasing after them. Right. Something happens. They bust you, they disappear, you don't know where they're at, you're dying of sweat. Before you go on that next stalk, before right. you go find that other just bowl or something. Just a little prep. Just a little prep, wipe down. You're just sweating your butt off. You know what, take it. Your armpits, your head, your sweat. Anything that where you're sweating. Here's, soak this down with your sprays. I mean, take your head off and smell it. Oh my gosh, you know it's there. And especially if you wear these hats all the time, like we do. I got to protect, there's nothing up there. But the thing is, is having that is going to help you. And again, here we go. Knowing the wind, doing the prep you can. Now, let's say you got that bull working or you're yes. hunting cows. I mean, I don't, you're hunting elk. You turn around and everything's going, you hear them coming close and you feel that wind a little bit. Just start swirling. Nothing you can do about it. There is a little bit. You can preserve milliseconds of time by taking either a spray spray here, a scent spray, or an aerosol and turn around and hurry up and hit it in the air. This is putting the either the cow, the bull in rut, or the, the cow in heat scent molecules up in the air that may, just may give you that one more second of getting that shot off. Now, one of the things that we do always have on our hats yep. are the fresh earth scent wafers. I'm sure you smell. see them. Ooh, that, that's hunting season right there in a wafer. I'm telling you, smells like dirt. We usually have them on our hat. A lot of people don't know what they are. It smells like dirt, no matter where you're at. Yeah, I always say from Alaska the world, to Africa, pick up dirt, what's it smell like? This. Again, it's just a, a slight cover scent right. to give you that extra time. Now, You Ralph, can go to an extreme. Don't do this, no. <laughs> okay. Cow elk urine scent wafers. No, no, no. That's, I'm telling you right now. Wow. But on, on the plus side of using that, you will know when that wind switches because you are going to smell it and you're going to be like, oh boy, here we go. But Here's they the do. Thing. They make go. different scent yep. wafers. 
they do help in a pinch. They got cedars, they got pines. The big yes. thing here is using the wafers, you're not putting scent on you. The scent doesn't come off that wafer and go on your gear which is a big plus, because if you spray down, you smell like that pretty bad. This, you could put it, pin it on you, and then when you take it off, it's gone, which is amazing. But more than anything, we've used the wafers for years and years and years. And I will tell you, I truly believe going in these types of situations, when that wind shifts a little bit, you just put those set molecules up in the air, and it will, it will help you to have that moment of truth become reality. Hey, you know what? Oh, oh. Should we should we talk about some calls? Yes, love it. Okay, love so it. long story short, when we first met, okay, you used to actually guide out in Colorado for elk hunting. Yep. So, you know, you have helped a ton of people become successful elk hunting. My first elk, you really did a lot of the calling and got my elk in there. So, on that note, I have not shot as many elk and guided anyone for elk as he has. So I'm leaving this to you. Well, you go I, for it. I, I think through all the years, one thing I've experienced and witnessed is people come out and they sound bigger and badder than any bull that's on the mountain. The thing is, is if you, here's a bull, let's say a five by six, a five by five, he's got eight cows with him. He turns around and hears this massive bugle and he's like, oh, I'm gonna go fight. No. He's like, oh man, I'm taking my women and I'm going up over the mountain to where I know there's nothing, no challenging. So the thing is, is maybe don't always go out with a bugle. You can use a bugle to locate, at least hear something, but don't, you don't have to go all the octaves. <laughs> Just do that, raise the curiosity. The other thing is just like waterfowl hunting. Right. And, and we don't know how to call waterfowl. Let's be clear, I've, we, we, we suck at it, but it's still fun. Here's the thing with all types of calls. That's why everyone has calls around their neck. All these calls have different tones and you have to have a variable library of calls because sometimes you just need to coax them in. Well, the way to coax them in is make him believe that there's a few cows, there's more opportunity. So there's a herd than rather yes. than just one or two. So you come in. <coughs> you can t dial this one. You can throw it through your tube. Now you got a r whole type and you could go to your reeds. Let me ask you, out of all of those, what's your favorite? I have to tell you, for me, I like my reed. You like because reed I can calls. cow call, I can calves, I, I can do everything I like with these. that. Yep, you, yep. Because these are easy for me. I, if I put a reed in my mouth, I'm like <laughs> in a, on it, but this one I can do. The big thing, which is really cool with all your calls, <laughs> Your tubes are always going to allow you to get a little more of a bellow. And you can, if he's coming in and you're hunting alone, you can turn around, tuck it in back of you. So now the sound sounds like it's past you and you're bringing that bull through you to get the shot. I don't know if you guys can hear the difference in that, but instead of coming at you guys, definitely sounded behind us. Now, one of the things I do know is that when we do elk hunt elk, and if we get a shot at an elk, whether a cow or hit bull, him right hit him right away with a cow call or a bull call. Right, with a bugle, just challenge him right away. Because you want him to stop. You don't want him to keep running. Through the years, I've had bulls that I've shot. Vicky, we, we hurried up. We Arrow goes right through him or stick it in him. Hurry up, hit him with a call. He stops, and all of a sudden... He starts doing the dance. And that dance, well, we all know what that means. He's going down. So that is a big advantage, is trying to not have him cover as much ground. Now, one of the things is if you are out there by yourself, a decoy can help. Oh, decoys are tremendous. Uh, I mean, Montana Decoy makes a bunch of different ones. They're super lightweight. Just like this, they stick in the ground, and that's all it is is a butt. Or you got your full body. You'd be amazed amazed 
walking through the bush holding something like this, especially when you know you're getting into the elk, and they look at this, they calm down. They absolutely they, they calm down. They think that there's other elk in the area. So if you, if you trip, you crack a branch, something like that, make sure you have the decoy up because if they see it, they're going to calm down a little bit. Yep. Big, big plus to closing that distance on those, on those bulls coming in. We've got everything ready to go. Are you ready to talk about your impact, what you're going to use for that shot? Yes, and here's the big thing. Today, there's so many different choices to mm -hmm. make. The big thing is understand your kinetic energy when it comes to your gear, your bullet, your arrow. The big You're hunting an animal that has a bigger bone structure, thicker hide, thicker hair than what you're used to for, well, mostly white-tailed white -tailed deer. Right. Yep. So we have to realize that we have to maybe bump it up, give a little boost to that equipment to increase our kinetic energy. And sometimes we go, you know, if you're like shooting mechanical heads, and I do, I've shot my Spitfires forever and I've passed through bull elk, but I also understand my setups and I work on everybody else's to make sure that we have the optimum setup and that's your FOC, playing a little stronger FOC, playing a little bit more mass weight in the front end with a heavier brass insert or outsert. Right. And when we can't, when we can't try, when we, when we figure out that maybe we shouldn't have some people shooting a mechanical head on a bigger bone structure. Right, so for an example, because my, my setup is usually below 55 pounds, and with a mechanical, there's no way that I would try even shooting. Not on an elk. Not on an elk. Whitetail, I can do it, but not on an elk. Um, I am using the NAP Deep Cut Vented this year. Brand new head, shooting amazing, oh my like grouping, tight groups and everything else like that. It's a 100 grain broadhead, but like Ralph said, I do a heavier brass insert on the front to give me more of that oomph power behind my Easton Axis arrows. And what we're doing is we have, again, I've said it for 40 years, decrease your cutting surface, increase your penetration. Pretty simple. So what we did is we went to a little bit smaller cut on contact broadhead, right. brand with, new from NAP. With bleeders on with it. With bleeders, yep. And it is absolutely amazing, I mean, what, what the performance we're seeing on things that we have tested already and said, wow, right. he, here's the thing. And again, being consistent with whatever broadhead you're shooting and understanding decreasing the cutting surface will increase the penetration, especially on bigger game. Now, we're gonna jump over to bullets, okay? My favorite caliper used to be the 300 Win Mag. Yep. The 6.8 Western came out. Love my Browning 6.8 Western. Now here's the deal. Is the 6.8 Western, their big game ammo is a 175 grain bullet. Now hear that out, because we have been to a lot of camps that if people are shooting some of these other calipers, but they're shooting a lighter bullet and they're losing game. It's not giving enough energy to it. No, yeah, that's right. not enough of the thump to it. Now, we have taken elk, elk moose, deer, I mean everything, everything with this with this caliper, yep. and I wouldn't hesitate in a heartbeat to take this. However, there are obviously other ones. There's, you have your 300 wind mags for that. I mean, what other calipers are you shooting? Are people well, shooting out there for elk? I mean, there, there's plenty of them out there. Hell, they're still shooting 30 out sixes. You, you know what I mean? Right. But, but, but the big thing is, is understanding the bone structure, the anatomy of any shot game that placement. You, shot placement is everything. These lighter bullets, if you're trying to bust them down on the shoulder, may not have that energy to do it, especially if you're trying to extend the distance in your shooting. So if you're, instead of maybe extending the distance, become a little better woodsman and get closer. Then you'll see a big results and differences in all of your recoveries. You shoot, it's down. I shot. Now what do we do? Yes, I was nice. I let you okay, shoot this you. time. You're welcome. Okay, what are we gonna do now? All right, here I'm gonna sit back to me, one and of the most a, yeah. Oh no, no, yeah, no, that's no, what no. I'm no. gonna do. Yeah. One of the most critical parts, and that is taking care of the animal. Now he's down. Yes. Now the cow or the bull's down. Now you want to take care, make sure that that meat is the most pristine that it always can be. Absolutely. A few things. One, have a good pack frame, and don't just go to the store and buy one. Please. Put it on at home, throw some weight in there, and hike with it, and see where you need adjustments. Because the worst thing you can do is grab a new pack, go up there, take the hindquarters, take the front shoulders, take back shoulders, and then remove the head. And next thing you know, you can't move for a month because you, you just it wasn't set up properly. And, and, and here's one of the things, too, is you can actually go to like a Bass Pro Cabela's, and they will help you 
get Absolutely. that pack adjusted on you yep. so you're going to have it correct. Because they have so many different adjustments on these things. You can go in there, look at, even like on this Alps Elite pack, you can you adjust, can adjust this torso, extra large, yep. large, medium, small, extra small. You can adjust everything. You can adjust the, the straps here. You can adjust everything up here on the top so they're not too heavy on your shoulders. Everything so that it fits right. So like you said, you're not sore after. I mean, you're going to be sore, but it's not going to be extra sore. Here's the other thing. A lot of good packs, you know, a lot of good designers have turned around and made different size packs that attach. So right. what's really cool is you can take a small pack like this, throw in all of your, your, you know, your, your bags, your tarp, your knives, everything that you're going to need to pack that animal out in a small pouch, attach it to it. So now you have all your other gear. But more than anything, you have one organized setup for exactly what you need, and that's processing the animal in the field and getting them out. A really cool feature on any pack that you're looking for to make sure that they have the different size pouches. Because you'd be amazed that once you keep it organized, it stays clean, it stays dry, and more than anything, you always know where it's at. So the first thing you're going to do is cut your tag. Yep, you got to punch your tag. Punch your tag right off the bat before you do anything, even before you decide to take a picture. Here's the other thing, make sure you have twine, make sure you have a cable tie, or if you've ever seen this, I carry all this all the time, this is just rubber wire, that's all it is. There's wire inside with a rubber coating, and I carry it just about a size like that, this way, I punch our tags, I cut our tags, we wrap it on the hind leg, and we ha wrap it, if, if you need two positions of tags, you know, on right. the head and on the, on the meat somewhere, you have all of this cord, cable ties or twine that works really good. Because sometimes what happens, you end up using your shoelace. Yep. Or maybe that strap on the bottom of your pants or something off of a back. Because sometimes, you know, you may forget it, but you should always make sure you do tag Because what's animal. the saying? Proper planning prevents piss poor performance. There is that. And there I've been there that. a bunch. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do. All right, first and foremost are knives. You want to make sure there's all types of different knives out there. You know, some of the things that we like, we really do favor, and that's here's a good muddy knife that turns around replaceable blades. The thing weighs nothing, right. has a good solid grip, it's not real narrow, and it's not just a surgical steel sharp blade, but it's not that thin stuff either that snaps on all of them. This is a heavy duty blade, so turning around, getting in there, cutting the socket out and all that is a real big plus. Another folder, you, you know what I mean, yep. from Cold Steel, Cold same steel. thing, is you can replace the blades. Now, you could have the fixed handled ones like this, you got your little gut hook, you've got everything Straight which is cool. For the hide. Yep. So you've got all of these things. But where do you put the meat? You don't want to lay it in the ground. No. So Caribou Gear, they created this. This is called the Hunter's Tarp. <sighs> it's the most simple thing that you could ever think of. Steaks? But look at this. You take this out, you lay it on the ground, you stake it down, and, and now. You can lay your quarters on there while you're gutting it. You know, you're cutting it all up. And While you're processing in the it. field, now you have a clean tarp to turn around, put the thing, put, put, put them down, and when you get them there, now you get yourself a good set of game bags. This is so critical. I've seen so many through the years, they just get this cheap cheesecloth stuff in it, and it does not keep the meat, does not take care of the meat. If you invest a little bit of money and get yourself a great set of game bags, meat. you're gonna come home from a trip, wash them, and, and you're going to have them for next them. year and yes. the year after and the year after. So don't cheapen on the thing that's so critical in keeping that meat clean on the field. Now, one of the things you didn't mention, though, is if it's the afternoon and you shoot an elk, it's going to be dark before you get oh, done. So make yep. sure you have headlamps. Yep, we, we carry, carry two, two or three head, Two or three time. headlamps plus extra batteries. You're going to want a headlamp no matter what you're doing. Make sure you have some kind of a headlamp, a flashlight, because you also could be packing this meat out in the dark. Absolutely. You're going to want to know where you're going. Everybody makes headlamps. But the big thing is, is some of them have a bleep, have a blinking setup, a menu in, or, or a mode for blinking. God forbid something happens. You immediately have that headlamp and you put it on that if you're laying down, you're hurt or something else, and you turn around and that's just going up in up in the air and you can see it. You can locate it and so could any of the rescuers, you know, locate right. it so much easier. You know now yep. after you're all done, yep, wipe again, them down. Our wipes. Scent wipes. Gotta use them, wipe them down. These work for more than just 
making yourself sun away. It's gonna keep you clean throughout the entire day and throughout your entire trip. Now, if you're gonna be hunting with an outfitter, you might not have to go in, to the All extreme the and, we, and, and yeah. get a frame pack. You know, this is your first cut time coming out or second or third or whatever. You may not need that, do, you know, but understand if you are hunting more on your own or you're gonna do a lot of the packing yourself, you wanna have that frame pack, you wanna have it broken in and you wanna have it adjusted for you. Because if you don't, I'm telling you right now, it's gonna make for some horrible misery, pain, agony, and most of all, not fun stuff. Congratulations, and we hope you guys have an amazing elk season out there. Elk, moose, sheep, whatever, whatever, you're, it is. whatever you're doing out there. Enjoy the season, and um, God bless y'all. I think you said it better than I could. The, bi the big thing here is God told us to be stewards of the land and the animals. Good luck. Hey, also, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, oh. so other people can enjoy our videos. That's it. That's it. We're done. Enjoy.